of the most challenging questions posed by beginner gardeners is where should I put my garden? There's something about putting seeds in the ground in a space that feels permanent. And if you are a planner like me, you may be arranging and rearranging your potential garden using every tool imaginable. The location of your garden can make or break the success of your garden season, but choosing where to put your garden does not have to be difficult. Today, we'll talk about a few considerations that can help you choose a location that will give you multiple bountiful harvests. Welcome to Garden Things with Friends, where we share simple garden tips and tricks to help busy beginner gardeners build their dream garden. Be sure to check out the resources below the video as I share all my favorite recommendations, as well as bonus resources to this video. And if you love the episode, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification icon so you never miss an upload. Now, let's get back to the video. Now, I know firsthand how overwhelming it can be to decide on a location for your garden. When I decided I wanted to grow in my current backyard, I thought the side yard near my door was the perfect location. I wanted to have four raised beds in rows of two, and this seemed easy enough. But when I went to measure the raised beds, I didn't end up having enough space. This led to many considerations and many garden plans. On top of that, the side yard location got five hours of sunlight at best. Now, I quickly realized that while a side yard garden was a good idea at first glance, choosing the right location would require a bit more foresight. And today, I want to talk about five things that help determine my perfect garden location. So the first, and in my opinion, most critical consideration for garden placement is the amount of sunlight present. Plants thrive when provided with sunlight, water, and nutrient-rich soil. The location of our gardens plays a crucial role in ensuring plants receive the optimal amount of sunlight for their growth. The amount of sun exposure required for plants varies depending on the type of plant and the native environment for that particular plant. For most of our crops where leaves are harvested and consumed, partial sun is adequate. This includes crops like lettuce, spinach, and kale. Root vegetables can also tolerate some shade and still reach maturity. On the other hand, our fruiting crops such as tomatoes, peppers, and berries will require full sun. And that's defined as six to eight hours of direct sunlight per day. And this is ideal for most of our garden crops. When choosing the location of your garden, an uninhibited six to eight hours of sunlight can help ensure a productive garden all through the season. And it's important to locate your garden in an area that receives ample sunlight. Fortunately, there are several methods of assessing the sun exposure in your yard or potential garden area. The first method of determining sun exposure is to do shade mapping. And this is a manual method and requires you to basically draw your backyard with all of the structures included. And these structures are going to include things like your home, trees, fences, shrubbery, um, things like that. And then over the course of a sunny day, you'll track the shadows on paper. This method is very easy, but it can take time as you need to take several readings throughout the day. Now, if you'd like a quicker method, there are several online tools that can help determine the sunlight and shade in your garden space. My favorite is Find My Shadow. And with this tool, you input your location, then map out your space. And once it's mapped, you can easily see the tracking of shadows of those structures on any given day of the year. And I'll link that below. Um, as a final note the, to sun exposure, I want to remind you that not all sunlight exposure is the same. Those who live in northern regions may not be able to grow as well in the shade, even crops that can usually tolerate partial shade. Additionally, those who garden in the south can garden in areas with partial sun, especially if that shade is in the afternoon when the summer sun is detrimental to even plants that thrive in the heat. Now, the next thing to consider when choosing the location of your garden is drainage. More specifically, the relative slope of your growing space. Now, if you're growing in a raised bed or containers, this may not be as much of an issue. In these growing conditions, you're able to level your growing medium, but if you're growing in ground, this will be far more impactful. The relative slope of your yard will affect how water drains and therefore 
how often you need to water your plants. If your garden is on a slight slope or hill, water will drain away from your plant's roots faster than if you were on flat ground. Now, while this may seem counterintuitive, it can actually cause an issue with drought stress. On the other hand, if your garden is in a low lying area, you'll deal with water pooling, which can cause root rot and other fungal diseases. This next factor is going to be highly important for the time efficient gardener. And that factor is convenience. Gardening does not have to be time consuming. In fact, I recommend sizing your garden based on the time you can spare for it. While a garden shouldn't demand all your time, it's still beneficial to have it located in a space that's convenient for daily maintenance tasks. Now these daily maintenance tasks can include things like watering, harvesting, pest control, weed control, fertilizing, and each of these are important for garden success. And the proximity to your home or the convenience of the garden space makes consistently completing these tasks that much easier. Now we're to our last consideration, and that consideration is soil quality, which is important to take into account. Different areas of your yard are going to have varying soil quality, which can significantly impact plant growth and yield. Before planting, it's crucial to assess the soil quality in your desired garden location, and this can easily be done with a home soil test or one conducting at a soil testing lab. It's worth noting that while soil quality is important, it won't make or break your garden location because soil can always be amended. So there you have it. Five things you should consider when choosing a garden location. Sun exposure, drainage, accessibility to water, convenience, and soil quality. They're all important factors that can contribute to a successful garden. By taking the time to assess your yard and considering these factors, you will be well on your way to finding the perfect spot for your dream garden. Now, if you dug this episode, I would be honored if you would rate this podcast and spread the word to your friends who are also passionate about gardening. Your five-star support fuels the growth of Garden Things with Friends, and together we'll cultivate a network of thriving garden and plant-loving friends. Happy gardening, and remember, it's never the wrong time to grow where you are.